So let's talk about pets. Do pets stick around? Do they come back? Are they still with you? Uh, I'm going to tell you yes, <laughs> because I've had um, experiences with my own pets after they passed on. So growing up, we always had cats. We had one cat and then a second cat. Um, couldn't have dogs in the apartment where we lived in New York. Um, so we had a cat smuggled in um, and uh, named Lulu. And my father got her from his boss who got it for his kids, but the kids were allergic. So dad took in Lulu. So Lulu was there when I was born and basically helped raise me. Um, and she moved to Connecticut with us um, in 76 and um, basically lived a few more years before getting bone cancer and we had to put her to sleep. Um, parents said, okay, we're not getting another cat, no more pets. But you know, three months later, an article appears in the paper for, uh, at the time, Cat Haven in a town near us. And so they go over there looking for the cat in the photo and they get there and they find Sailor instead, a 22 pound uh, Maine Coon cat mix, a big cat, but it had short fur, black and white, black patch over the eye, little black patch here on the chin. So they called him Sailor. And he was so well behaved, they let him out of the cage and he would just wander around. So grabbed him, bring him back. So Sailor's with us, maybe a couple months. Uh, I'm sitting in the living room. We have French doors. The stairs went upstairs to the second floor from there, outside the French doors, the hallway. And so I'm sitting there watching TV uh, one night. And all of a sudden, from the top of the stairs, very clearly, meow, meow, a couple loud meows. I'm like, that doesn't sound like Sailor. So I get up, walk into the kitchen where my mother's sitting at the kitchen table. I go, where's Sailor? Oh, he's on your father's chair. So I look under the table and the chairs are pushed in. There's Sailor sleeping on the chair. I said, well, I just heard meowing from the top of the stairs. And like I've said, my mother's very nonchalant about this. She said, oh, it's probably Lulu. So Lulu was still around, hopefully not stuck in the house. Anyway, um, fast forward, um, my mother moves to Florida and um, we had to have Sailor put to sleep before she moved. Um, but, you know, the cat had a personality like you wouldn't believe, an attitude problem, um, like a lot of cats do, but you very, you just love the cat. So um, I'm in Syracuse at this point, and one morning, I don't know why, I was dreaming about, you know, the cats and Sailor, missing Sailor and all that. It's just like, oh, you know, I would call him Bigum Kitty because he was 22 pounds, huge cat. Um, and so, oh, Bigum Kitty, and you know, like that. And then suddenly from the, I have queen size bed, from the bottom corner of the bed, I feel boom, 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 walking across the bed towards me. I didn't open my eyes. It gets right up to me and I just freak out and I throw the <laughs> covers up. I go, ah, get away from me, get away from me, get away from me, like that. So I think I may have dissed Sailor a little bit. Um, yeah, so that was Sailor coming to visit. Um, my brother uh, out in Oregon had a dog for years, Susie, a big, I think a golden retriever, golden lab. No, I think golden retriever, the longer fur. Um, for years, poor Susie would be sat on the porch. It was indoors, but it was like the indoor porch to the front door. Uh, sat there because um, for whatever reason, they didn't want her in the house. So. Um, like I said, I'm not a dog person, but I took pity on poor Susie every time I would visit. Uh, it's like, come on, Susie, let's go for a walk. Take her for a nice long walk a mile or so down the dirt road my brother lived on. And, you know, it got to the point every time I'd come over, Susie would get excited and, you know, because she knew she was going for a walk and get some exercise. So um, fast forward, moved to Illinois a couple of years ago. And uh, one morning, um, I'm in my bed left side of the bed, edge of the mattress is right here. And 6.30, twilighty again, sun's just coming up, um, just coming to, and then right behind, right to the left side of my ear, right there, banging on the mattress. Boom, 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 boom. Like, Ugh, come to with a startle. I'm like, what on earth was that? No idea. Well, talked to my sister-in-law later that day, and it turns out Susie had had heart failure the day before and had died that night. 
So I'm guessing that was Susie that came to visit. That's my guess. Um, my last experience, a few weeks ago, um, I finally did a bucket list item. I went out to Lilydale Assembly in New York, which is a big psychic, mediumship, spirituality um, camp. Uh, they do classes all summer long. It's like Chautauqua, which is nearby, which is a literary festival. This is more of a spiritualist uh, festival. So I took some classes, and the week before I'm getting ready to go to Lilydale, uh, wouldn't you know something came to me just about every morning. Um, so I had a face appear to me. I had a voice very loudly say, pardon, pardon, in Spanish accent. And uh, But uh, the third encounter, uh, again, woke up 6.30 a.m., kind of, you know, coming out of it. And very vivid picture next to me, two dogs. One is a reddish-haired dog. I don't know if it's a golden lab, golden retriever. It didn't look like Susie, um, the shorter hair uh, right there, and then a yellow lab slightly behind them. And they come up to me <laughs> like that, and one of them starts to lick my face. And I don't like have my face licked by dogs. So I was like, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, go away. So I snapped out, and it was gone. But those have been my encounters with pets and other animals.